Okay, this is John Felton, Planning and Data Services Coordinator at the Nebraska Library Commission. And my colleague, it's Catherine Brockmeyer, who's our special uh, projects associate. And uh, today, and actually we can show you a picture of us, even though there's a webcam on. We can click to the next uh, and show you who we are. We're the data wranglers here at the Library Commission. So we do all the survey work. And uh, what we're gonna demonstrate today is uh, the new version of Bibliostat Collect, which a lot of you have probably used before, but this year there is a new version. So we thought we would show you that version uh, to make it a little easier to use. Now this uh, Bibliostat Collect is the product that we use to gather statistics from public libraries every year on such things as library usage, collections, operating revenue and expenditures, staffing, and technology. And actually, every state is using some form of collection device to do this so that it all gets collected nationally. Now we delayed the release of the, of the Nebraska Public Library Survey this year, which is the 2007-2008 year, so that we could uh, use this new revised version of Collect. Which I think you'll find a lot easier to uh, complete and to submit. I think we go to the next. Yeah, these are some of the improvements that. Uh, uh, Baker and Taylor has made in this uh, application. Uh, first of all, as you'll see, there's a much better user interface. Uh, it doesn't look so clunky. It's not so clunky to use. Uh, and it's actually moved into the modern world. The other one was kind of like uh, the old days before we had Windows. It also works with more internet browsers. You don't have to use just Internet Explorer for this. If you're familiar with using Firefox, if that's your default browser, you can use that as well and it works just fine as long as you're version 1.5 or above. In fact, that's how I've been using it here at the Commission. Um, it used to be that we had problems with pop up blockers. If your pop up blocker was on in the old version, you always had to make sure it got shut off or you wouldn't be able to complete your survey. Well, now that's been eliminated. It doesn't seem to cause any problem at all. Another nice feature that I like is automatic total calculation. Uh, for those of you who've done this before, you always had to click update at the end of the page in order for the fields of that total data to actually add them up. But now, as you're going through the, the data, it'll actually add it on the fly as you're going through. Another thing that's easier is when you get to the end and want to submit your data, you'll often be asked for uh, corrections to edit checks, things that uh, the program thinks maybe aren't right or something you uh, forgotten. Now it's much easier to go ahead and correct those without going back to the actual survey itself. You'll find that much easier, I believe, too. Plus, uh, when you do print your report uh, before you submit it, the formatting for the PDF reports is really much better than it was before. So these are some really nice improvements and I, I hope that you'll find this much easier to use. So that's why we're demonstrating it to you today. So now Catherine's going to talk about ways you can access the survey when you're ready to send us your data. Okay, we're going to move over to the web. All right, here we go. 
the username and passwords used to access the survey remain the same, what you've had before, but the internet address has changed slightly. Uh, before, if you had this bookmarked, what you had was collect.informata.com. You will not arrive at the right website. You need to make sure that you have changed your bookmark or your favorites to collect.btol, which is bakertaylaronline.com. So you can either enter your new URL directly or go to the library data services page on the Nebraska Library Commission website where you'll find some extra information. This is our uh, web page, the library data services. You'll see it's www.nlc.state.ne.us slash statistics. And on that page, you'll find some information we'd like to show you. Scrolling down in bold, it does say submit your public library statistics online. This will take you to another page with some information. Before you do that, you may want to check out our FAQ which has survey instructions or the data's definitions. But once you're ready, go ahead and follow the link to submit your public library statistics online. That takes you to another page. So once you're ready to start the survey, you may either click on the graphic here on the, the link Again, below are the FAQ survey instructions or the definitions that you can, that we've pulled from their site that you don't need to log in to read up on it in advance if you need to do that. Otherwise, go ahead and follow the link. Now you will see this takes you to collect.btol.com and you should have a username and password I'll select put ours in. And click on the green login button. We'll look at the opening screen now. I'm kind of curious what you, what you see. If you see what I see, which is a smaller screen. You're you may only see so much. Um, in your screen, you might see frequent questions and perhaps you see 2008 Nebraska Public Library Survey. And uh, some of you might like to have your favorites or your uh, bookmarks on the left, which means that your user space over here on your right is even smaller. You'll notice you have a scroll bar down at the bottom. This has been one of our most frequently asked questions. They say, we can see Nebra 2008 Nebraska Public Library Survey. We can also see links to 2007 and older surveys, but we can't seem to find out how to get into 2008. Well, you've got to keep scrolling to the right. You've got your scroll bar down at the bottom. There is the button, continue survey. The best way to optimize your space is to close out your favorites or bookmarks on your left. Also, uh, maximize your window. And there you see you do have the view of the continue button survey. That's the one way to get to, to get in and start. So that was our first frequently asked question and uh, deservedly so. They hid it to the right. Okay. So another reason might be your resolution is set too low. Um, I think that's about it. So once you get going there, you see the scroll bar is missing because we have everything we need that we can see in here. And we will click on continue survey to follow. Okay, I'm turning it back over to John. Okay, once you do find that green button and start your survey, or if you've already looked at it before, it'll say continue survey. You'll see our, our first page, which is section A of the library survey. But at this point, I also want to show you uh, some of the new tabs they've set up and explain what they do. Um, actually, 
home doesn't do a whole lot. It just takes you back to where you started before. Survey is where you will be most of the time. And if you're going off and doing something else, like looking at the frequent questions, looking at the instructions, this tab will still show up and you can always get back to your survey. So this is how it, and, you, and of course you have here your navigation. If you've already completed part of the survey and you want to skip ahead, you can always go down here to this navigation bar and click whichever one you stopped at before. Um, the status button you won't use now, but this is what you, what you will use when you finish your survey and are ready to review the data before submitting it. So remember, this is probably the last screen you will get to when you are finished with your survey. Printing. Uh, printing, again, is something you use toward the end. However, a lot of people, understandably, would like to have a blank survey to use when they're going off and collecting the data. It makes it much easier to do that. So you can print the entire survey um, without data and just click it either as a web report or a PDF, and it'll just produce a blank survey for you before you start. So this is a real handy thing. Later, you'll want to, you can have the choice of either printing it with just this year's data, or you can have the, uh, a little longer report that compares last year's and this year's data. So there are some options. You can also print a section of the report if that's what you're looking to do. Frequent questions. This is a section that uh, Bibliostat puts together to help you uh, with some problems you're having using the survey uh, navigation or other, the other uh, parts of the survey. So you might want to just kind of go through this, look at it, and you know, see if there's something there that you've had problems with before. Or as you're using the survey, if you run into a problem, you might want to go here. And then over here, the last tab, these are the instructions for the Nebraska survey itself. This is a way to see what our definitions are for all of our data elements. And it's arranged alphabetically by section. Uh, if you need to, to say, what do they mean by operating revenue, for instance, you can go in here and see what we mean by that. Uh, another thing to look at as we go back to the survey is this is a new button over here. It says show last year's data. Uh, a lot of you will want to click on this because when you do, then you'll see that it shows you what you entered last year. Sometimes it just makes it easier to, to know what, what you did last year. You can also hide it again if you don't want to see it. But I think most of you will like it in this, in this mode. And down at the bottom, I'm going to harp on this quite a bit. You'll see a save and an X button after every one of the pages. And there are actually 17 different screens, although some are quite short. But before you click this next button, I advise you every, on every page to just click save. That way, if your browser freezes, um, or your connection gets uh, interrupted or something, you won't lose your data. Um, and uh, so please think of that. Now, the one thing I don't like about it is whenever you click Save, instead of leaving you where you were, it takes you to the top of the screen. Uh, this is another thing we'll be telling Bibliostat. Now, if you're working on the survey and you go away from your desk, um, it will time out after a certain period of, uh, of time. You may get back to your desk and see this little counter going that's counting down the seconds before it logs you off. If you do see that, remember that you can always click the F5 function key on your keyboard, and it'll get you back to the survey. So we, we saved this screen, and we're going to go ahead. Oh, I know. I was going to show you one thing I had flagged. 
we here's another thing you can do if you're having uh, questions about what sort of data you're going to put in a in a particular question but you don't want to go look it up right now a good idea is just to click this flag um, because later when you're finishing your survey there is a button you can click that says show me all the flagged questions and it'll remind you that oh I forgot to go back and answer that one and the reason I flagged this one on phone number is when you're entering phone numbers uh, we want the whole 10 digits, but you don't have to put in parentheses for the area code or a hyphen between um, the numbers. You just put in a 10-digit number, and it'll, it'll format it itself. Now, going on to section B. Whoops, let me miss anything. Uh, that's you. Okay, we're going to go back to section B, but that's... Catherine's turn. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> he gets pretty eager. <laughs> I, was on a, I was on a roll. You were on a roll. <laughs> okay, so, so and I'm going to just stop and take a, a moment here to let us know that you can always send us your text messages if you have any questions or comments at any time. I've checked and we haven't received any, which is, you know, so far so good. We're doing, we're doing good here. I'm gonna, there we go, we can always get back to that. So we were in, in section A, John showed us section A, which is basic. Most of this should already be filled out. Again, as he said, uh, you don't need parentheses or hyphens for phone numbers or fax numbers. And we've done section A, so we would click save. Unfortunately, it takes us to the top of the screen we can scroll down to hit the next button or you can select the section on the left under survey navigation section b is also pretty easy to complete but remember to calculate the number of total weeks correctly if you have regular and summer hours so they should add up to 52. We, have, we flagged these for ourselves to remind you. If you have, if you have um, no summer hours, then you would put 52 here. However, if you do have summer hours, say 12 weeks of your summer, you just need to make sure that 2.2 and 2.5 should total 52. Oh, you have to put the thing in there. Many hours a week. And then it does calculate for, for you the your total number of hours. And you see, I had to enter some data. If I change this, it will automatically change my calculation at the bottom. But it's up to us to make sure that 2.2 and 2.5 add up to 52. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna save my data. Scroll to the bottom and click next. Section C is library facility questions. It's another page where much of the data will probably already be filled in and cannot be edited. So note that wherever the question is in purple text, that's these such as 3.1, 3.2 in bold, and a little lower, 3.7 and, and, and onward. These are questions that must be completed. And you will find out later on when you do your edit check, if you have not filled in those boxes, that will come up in your edit check. So we will save and we'll go to the next section, D. This is the library finance page. This might be the reason why you'd like to print this out in advance. 
uh, the whole section D uh, because then you can go and gather your data and then come back and fill this out. Don't forget this is for fiscal year 2007-2008. And you can also uh, add groups if needed. You receive funding from more than one county, for instance. So we will come down here. This is where you would add another group here or here for other local government revenue. So in section D part two, you begin to see automatic calculation field. And scrolling down, 4.16 is only for LSTA library improvement grants. So be sure that that's reserved for that only. And as you enter these fields, the total should calculate here at the end. We'll save and click next. Part three is more revenue figures. This is the place to enter sources of income that you had not yet specified. Again, you can add groups as you need to. And you can check your definitions while you're going through by clicking on the number if it's linked. This is where you it will pop up to give you definitions. Again, these totals will calculate as you enter data above. Part four. Capital revenue. The beginning. This is a one. Okay. As we get down here to 4.31, you're starting the expenditure section of the survey. Right above it, it says operating expenditures. And note here that you, if you have an amount in salaries and wages, you really shouldn't leave benefits blank, which is the one right below it, which is 4.32. As employers must match Social Security and Medicare payments, which is considered a benefit. So if you pull up the definition in the information for 4.32, here's your help for question 4.32. Include amounts for direct paid employee benefits, including Social Security, retirement, medical insurance, life insurance, et cetera. You can read up on this a little bit more. So what we're trying to say is if you fill in any amount for 4.31, you should take into account that you are providing some employee benefits and that amount should be entered in 4.32, which will then total for you at 4.33. Okay, scrolling down, we would save our data before we move on, especially as browsers can get sticky. And we are into section D, did that not move on? Oh, yeah, there isn't much another... to talk about. Here, so. Pardon? There isn't much to talk about in D. Okay. All right. And to section E, library materials. This is your collection holding section. Please note that audio and video definitions have changed to accommodate downloadable files. There you go. Okay, so here's audio with a note. You enter your overdrive figures under audio. So overdrive is new for many, many libraries this year. Um, 
in terms of how it's been identified in this survey, especially. If any library has begun offering downloadable videos, you enter that down here uh, where you put DVDs. Also, pay attention to the electronic databases area. Please note that the number that gets calculated here in 5.20 will need to later match figures from section six. So this is one to jot down and make sure that in section six, your amount here in 5.20 will later match what we'll show you in another section. I'm gonna save and going on. A few more on library materials. He had serials, electronic subscriptions, and other materials. You can also add groups as needed. These are automatic right here under total collection. And clicking next, we are to section F, library services. Please note here that, which point two is now? Yeah. Oh, it's me. Okay, uh, I just want to point out again here on this section that, again, you've got a lot of purple questions here. So, and these are ones that sometimes people do not collect and we really need you to collect these, these data here. Um, another point is down here on 620, right here, this is a new question. Wireless internet access available to patrons. Uh, this used to be, this question used to be uh, list your, the URL for your uh, online OPEC if necessary. Uh, we collect that somewhere else now in a different survey. So what we'd like to know now, and you can just use, say yes or no with this drop down, is do you offer uh, wireless internet access for your patrons? Some of you who just got the uh, Wi-Fi grant, uh, probably not this survey, but next year you'll be able to put yes for this. Um, down here on 629, okay, this, this question uh, doesn't have a really great explanation. It just says, Select the type of connections to the library internet access. Well, wireless, what we mean by this is a couple of things. One, we mean if uh, the only connection you have to your library to the internet is through some kind of wireless connection from your internet service provider, please check this button. Now, if you have two subscriptions, let's say you have a T1 line, up here, and you also have a separate subscription to say a DSL line that you only use for wireless for your customers, please check both. Otherwise, just check the connection that is your primary connection to the internet here. Now, let's see what else we're gonna ask you. Let's see. So I'm going to save this, go back, Whoop. and on this section right here, remember we told you at uh, question 520, electronic databases, that you should pay attention to the automatic, automatically calculated total? Well, that's because these three sections here under license databases, even though they aren't totaled, these numbers have to total the same one you had 
in question 520. Otherwise, you're going to get an edit check when you get to the end, and you're going to have to fix it somehow before you go on to submit your survey. So that's just a, a little tip about how this works. So again, we're going to save. We're going to go next. And I'm going to hand it. Well, actually, you know, G is pretty easy. <laughs> uh, just put in here, uh, call off in your library board. It means this might already be filled in, in fact, from previous years. If it's changed, go ahead and do that. But you can see the last year on this one, it was a seven year period. It still is, so you could leave it. Still again, save, go to the next. And then Catherine will talk about paid staff. Okay. Oops. This first question, 8.1, asks for the total ALA MLS paid staff that you have. The next question should say total librarians. In other words, all persons in your library with the title of librarians. You cannot have a greater number in 8.1 than 8.2. They can either be equal or 8.2 must be greater. So if you have four staff total and two of them, let me change that and two of them are ALA, MLS, then you this is how you would enter it. You may also have other paid staff who do not, who do not have the title of librarian, and that's where you would enter that here. And then this will total automatically on 8.4 for you. 8.5 and 8.6, refer only to the library director. And we do like to hear about your volunteers and the number of volunteers and the number of volunteer hours per week. This is your opportunity in section I to share with us what's been happening at your library. We would like for you to share your accomplishments and also what else has been going on. You could also send us a separate email if you'd like to give us an update. Uh, you've got 4,000 characters. You can be quite specific if you would like. And we certainly appreciate receiving this extra anecdotal information on top of the numbers as it gives us a broader picture of what's going on in your library. Section J, we're almost done. And this is the opportunity where we do ask for the name of the director or other authorized individual who has authorized the totals. This also gives us a contact person in case we do have some questions, if we do need to follow up. So we appreciate that as well. And John's gonna walk you through the final steps here. Yes, um, they have nicely put the instructions right here at the last page, so you'll know what to do, because there are several steps you have to go through in order to submit this uh, effectively. So the next thing you want to do here after saving it um, is go on to the next, into the next section. Oops. Uh, that's okay. So what we can do here is uh, save it. And then what you need to do is go up here to status. It won't automatically take you there. And you'll see that there is an order to help do all this if you remember the instructions. The first thing you want to do is actually not do edit checks, but go to this tab here, unanswered questions. 
Now, uh, what this will do is show you all of those purple questions, the ones you have to answer, and whether you have done it or not. And it gives you the opportunity here to go ahead and put a figure in without going back to the survey. And then when you go ahead and, and, and uh, go down here and say, save, it, it should actually uh, clear some of these off your, off your page. But you have to go down here and answer these in order to really complete the survey and, and to be able to submit it. If you want, you can also look at all the unanswered questions to make sure you haven't forgotten anything. So that's a pretty good practice, too. This is not just, as you can see, not just the uh, required, what we call the federal questions, but all the others. So that's your first step, really. Um, and then you can go to flag questions. Remember, this is your tool. This is the one you can use if you uh, want to go back and make sure that you've answered a question like we did. You can see that everything we flag shows up here. And if we forgot to answer it, we can go ahead and do it right here, or if we answered it incorrectly. So and this is a, another good practice to make sure if you did flag something, you don't forget it, to go ahead and include it. So once you do this, then you go back to the edit checks. This is kind of the hard part because sometimes there are certain formulas that they apply. And like if one year you, your totals for um, uh, programs were, were, were much larger than they are this year or vice versa, it's gonna give you a, a a question here. And what you can do on a lot of these, you can either correct it right on the spot, or if it, it'll tell you if, if you want to, if it wants a federal note, you can go ahead and click this, put a note in here, and explain it. Then when you correct it, it'll just go away. When you go down here, when you're and be sure when you're finished doing this that you go down here to this other green button and, and click Submit Corrections. What you'll see when that happens is some of these that you um, corrected, particularly if they were totals like this, will not even be there again. Others, you may be confused because they'll still be there, but what you'll see is that this text has turned green. That means Everything's fine. You explained it in your note. You're okay to go ahead. So when you're finished with this then, and you think you've got these all fixed, then you go up here to submit survey. It reminds you again, oh, did you do these things? Make sure that you did. Then you just submit survey. But before you do this, and they don't remind you of this. Actually, they do. They remind you in step four, go back up here, print a copy of it so that you have a record of what you submitted. This is, this is something you really will want to do. If you forget, you can always call us. We'll unlock your survey, and then you can do it. But uh, it, it's just simpler if you go in here before you submit it, when you fixed all of your edit checks and flagged questions and click on one of these to get a nice report. Then, back to status, back to the bottom, hopefully these <laughs> are fewer, and you submit corrections and you're done. It will thank you for submitting your survey, tell you what's done. We will be able to see it from our end and you're all set. So that's all there is to it. So, do we have any questions about it? I have a question. This is Bev in Scotts Bluff. Hi, Bev. Hi, Bev. Hi. Um, how do I get the stats for the overdrive, how many overdrive books there are? Well, we just happen to have Susan Nisley here who's in charge of overdrive. 
Hi, Bev. Um, you can always call me on the phone and I can get that information for you. Um, it's also available um, if you go into the content reserve module. Um, one of the reports will uh, let you see what the total number of items is. But again, I can always try to provide that information for you. Thank you. you. Yeah, that helps a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I don't show it yet any uh, texted questions, so feel free to send us through text chat if you have any questions. Uh, Karen, you had mentioned this is a, a te technical comment. You said you could hear us, but your microphone's not working. Um, so if you'd like to send us a text, that's fine. We have a question about internet connections saying I have both DSL and wireless. Do I check both? Uh, uh, actually, that kind of depends. If, you, if you're wireless, Here's the way I interpret this, and I'm, I may be different from some of my colleagues in other states, but what I determine is this. If your wireless is still getting the same internet and you're just sharing it with the wireless, I would, I would not even check it. I would just say that's one, you're only getting one connection. For instance, you get your DSL, and from that DSL connection, you attach an access point for wireless, that's just one thing. You can always go over on the other question and check. Yes, I do provide wireless for my patrons. Does that answer your question? Judy, you can either give us a green check mark next, next to your name or send us a text to verify that we answered your question. We're going to move on to our next question asking that next year when the survey will become available? Well, because we won't have to wait for um, the new survey, we could go back to the October 15th date. Um, but I guess I'm going to let you give me input on that if you want. If this has worked better for you starting in December, um, please let us know because we have even with a March 31st deadline, we still have time to get this submitted. So um, I might send out, in fact, I might send out an email to everyone asking, or do a survey uh, for this, to ask you what you prefer. So that's my answer. Okay, the next question was, um, that it can be somewhat overwhelming um, the first time through. One thing to do is to print it out, especially if this is your very first time to do Bibliostat, if you haven't done it in previous years, uh, the best that for you to do would be to go ahead and print out all of the questions and go ahead and show the previous year's answers so that you can compare to what's already been submitted for previous years or look at previous year's reports. Um, and then just take it a section at a time. You can save, you can leave it, you can call us, and we will be happy to um, be with you live on the phone while you're filling some of this out. Um, that's, that's, we're more than happy to do that. And I say we, but you should call called John. <laughs> <laughs> well, and remember that uh, after, you say, after you click the save button, you can, get, you can go ahead and log out and go back to it later. It's okay. You don't have to do this at one step. Uh, okay. So the follow-up question about the wireless then, let's go back into the survey. Going back to the wireless question real quickly here. That's in section Uh, so wire, wireless internet access that is if you provide wireless internet access to your patrons but if you're asking what how you receive your internet 
your facility. That's down below under type of internet connections and that's 6.24 through 6.30. Yes, and now, uh, to explain that again, and I hope it isn't too confusing, you can always call me if you have yeah, further questions about it, but my interpretation of this is that, um, uh, for instance, some libraries actually get their, their only wireless connection from uh, an ISP that sends it to them on a wireless connection. Uh, others will have um, actually two subscriptions. Well, for safety's sake, in some cases, they'll have a separate subscription just for to show your decision makers, your funders, how you're meeting the needs of your community or, you know, where you think you need to improve. It's a good way of showing people uh, how much you do for the community and how you really need funding. Um, then finally, uh, you have to submit your data through Bibliostatic Collect, uh, if you want to become eligible for public library accreditation, state aid, or the dollars for data grants. So there is a, a little a carrot there for you to submit them to us. So anyway, there, are, there are probably other reasons too we can think of, but these are the primary reasons that we really think it's a good idea for you to submit your data to us. So. That pretty much wraps it up. That pretty much wraps it up for us today. We've recorded this session and it'll be on, uh, on our website shortly. So those of you who missed it can actually see it again. If, if you're, you found this valuable and you want another live session, we'd be happy to do that on another day. So that's another thing you can certainly ask. And we would certainly appreciate your uh, feedback through emails or over the phone, what you thought of today's presentation, if it was helpful. Uh, if we answered the frequently asked questions that you have come up with, or if you have any suggestions for future uh, presentations, we'd certainly like to uh, hear about that. So we uh, want to make this as interactive and helpful for you as much as possible. And so this was one way for us to do this was through the live presentation, but also your phone calls and your emails are welcome. Yes, Just be sure to email or phone John. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back. We'll co go back to our slide just because we're so <laughs> we're so proud of <laughs> we're so proud of it. <laughs> we had too much fun with the lab coats. Yes. <laughs> but there's there's our uh, our emails actually aren't on here. Although it's quite easy. It's J Felton or K Brockmeyer at and then our long extension for our email and our phone numbers here are listed here also. Um, we appreciate seeing you or having you here with us today. Um, appreciate the interaction that we had with you, uh, with your live questions, with your texts, um, with your feedback, with the yes, no checks. And also when you uh, logged in to show us where in the state you were coming in from, that was a lot of fun for us to see. So I uh, hope we kept you awake this last hour and that uh, you received the information that you were hoping for. Please do send us feedback um, if you have any to share with us. We appreciate your time today. Yeah. Yeah, we have to go make rounds. <laughs> That's right. So thanks again. And I think we're going to sign off now. Again, thanks to Susan nicely uh, for her technical assistance today. She stepped in for Krista. And so thank you very much, Susan, for keeping everything running smoothly for us today. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.